Hello everyone, uh, welcome back uh, to the next video from my Code to Care series. Uh, I mentioned in the beginning that I was gonna rotate through three kinds of topics in this. The first being kind of educational videos on AI and ML, uh, the second topic being use cases, and the third topic being safety, risk, ethics, validation, that sort of thing. So I'm on that third rotation. So I'm gonna talk about patient safety, uh, and safety practices in AI in this particular uh, video. Okay, so this is a um, this is kind of a giant topic. So I'm only going to cover one um, uh, one part of it. But I think of uh, when I think of safety, I think of uh, two sides of a coin. So one is uh, accuracy, accuracy, uh, and the other is uh, failure modes or like imperfection. And by this I mean, um, you know, on the accuracy side, which is the one I'll talk about uh, today, you wanna build the best AI system that's the most accurate. And if you can, make it 100% accurate. So it's always doing the task uh, appropriately and in the right uh, way. The other side of the coin is to the extent that you can't do that uh, all the time, that you think through and understand the failure modes, the imperfection, like what would happen if it wasn't accurate? Would the user be able to recognize it? Is it easy for the user to validate the information that AI is providing uh, him or her? That sort of thing. So kind of thinking through driving accuracy as uh, high as you can, uh, but then also thinking through uh, what if it's not and how that, uh, how that looks to the user. And there are a variety of design techniques we can use on the right side of this uh, as well, but uh, that I will do in a future video. So I'm gonna talk about accuracy uh, in this one. So um, so the first thing, let me give myself some space here. Actually, let me draw the use case first. So, uh, or an example use case. So imagine you have a patient uh, data system uh, and in this system, you have you know, a normal user interface where a user is pointing and clicking and, and selecting menus and finding out information uh, about the patient. Uh, but you want to implement an alternate user experience or an additional user experience where the user can ask questions and get answers uh, from an AI type system. So the question might be, uh, has the patient presented for this before? and the system will look through the chart or look through the information and answer the question. So it's a generative AI uh, use case, uh, and it's answering very important questions um, about, uh, about the patient, okay? So that's the use case we're gonna go through. And this is a use case, um, at least the, the way I've described it uh, to you, where you want the accuracy to be as high as possible, uh, if, not, uh, if not 100%. So let's talk about how you might think about accuracy uh, in this uh, in this case, okay, like that. So the first thing to think about with accuracy is that use case really matters. So depending on the user and the use of the information, you will have different accuracy thresholds. So, for example, if the user is a clinician and the user will use this information to help make treatment decisions or diagnosis decisions for the patient, then this use case requires a very high level of accuracy, if not 100%. But if it's a scheduling user, let's say, and the scheduling user is asking almost the identical question, has the patient been here for this before? And what they're gonna do with the information is fill out a field, whether it's an existing patient or a new patient or an existing patient new problem, or existing patient existing problem, or something very minor, like just a field on a scheduling form, then the accuracy bar is much lower. So, um, so the first bit of analysis that you need to do is understand the user and the use of the data, how you intend the system to be used. The second, which is related to use case, another subset of use case, I would say, is the AI system supplementing an existing workflow or replacing some aspect of the workflow. So for instance, if, this, if a normal workflow 
that you envision does not have this information, but this is additive. You're adding information into the workflow. It's, it's more like an assistant or a co-pilot or kind of supplementary bonus information uh, that you didn't have before necessarily. Then that has a different level of importance than if you're replacing part of the workflow with AI. So for instance, if the clinician typically, or the physician typically asks a nurse, has the patient presented uh, for this before? Uh, and after, if after you deploy the AI system, you envision the physician not asking the nurse anymore, but just using the system, then it's replacing a piece of the workflow. So then the requirement is a whole lot higher from an accuracy point of view. So use, a user, the use of the system, and then where the system fits. Is it supplementing, is it assist, ass, assisting, or is it replacing a piece of the workflow? So that's all within the use case, and that really matters in terms of thinking through how accurate does the system have to, have to be to be uh, used. So that's use case. The second, uh, second thing I would say to think through then is what are the requirements for accuracy? Okay, sure you want it as high as possible, but what is the threshold by which you wouldn't even ship the system or you wouldn't even uh, deploy it? So you should decide this in advance before you build the system and make that a requirement of the system. And if you can't meet the requirement, then you don't deploy the software. So that, that's what I mean by requirements. Um, and one example requirement, uh, one example threshold that you might think about is the system has to be more accurate than a human. So that might be a reasonable way um, to set an initial requirement. There might be other ways, but the idea is that you need to thoughtfully set your requirements for accuracy. So let's say you do choose that. You say this system has to be more accurate than humans doing this task. Uh, then what you'd want to do is measure the performance of us, of clinicians or of your prototypical users at the task. So for instance, if you want the system to answer this question, has the patient presented before, then you might take 100 cases in a group of clinicians and have them answer the question with real patient information and see what accuracy they get. And you might be surprised that it's not 100%. So you might find it's 98%. The patient had presented before and the person didn't find it. It was buried deep in the, in the chart, let's say, or they thought they were there before because of some statement, but they really weren't, that, that sort of thing. So, um, so measuring uh, you know, the human performance at the task can be a nice way to set the requirement and have the AI system have to beat that requirement for it to be kind of satisfy the requirements and be deployed um, in, a, in a useful situation. Okay, so step two is really to thoughtfully think through, document those requirements and use that as real requirements in building the system and don't lower the bar just because you can't meet the, uh, meet the bar. Uh, and then the last uh, piece I would say is validation. Or the last piece I will talk about is validation. Now, um, validation is basically the testing process to make sure that the system that you built uh, meets the requirements and performs appropriately. Um, valid, the, and that's, that's not actually too different with generative AI, uh, except for one thing. There's a giant variety in input and a giant variety in output. So your test cases have to be a whole lot bigger. So for instance, on the input side, you know, our normal user interfaces of point and click and drop down have a very constrained input side. There's only so many ways that a user can kind of navigate and answer a question. But with an open text box where they can ask the question in any manner that they want or ask a series of questions in any manner that they want, there might be 50 ways to essentially ask the same question. And so you need to have a, uh, a broader variety of, of validation scripts basically to ask that question. And then on the output side, there might be hundreds of equivalently similar or equivalent ways that the system can accurately respond to that question. And so you need to test uh, for that. And so there's just, the, the, the theory is the same on the validation, but the amount of test cases, the amount of variety is much bigger for you to validate um, that the system is indeed meeting the requirements, that it's safe to use, that it matches the use case, that sort of, uh, that sort of thing. So that's what I wanted to cover for accuracy. This is obviously centrally important 
to creating a safe system to have good requirements, to, have, to build a system that exceeds those requirements, and you drive accuracy as high up as you, as you can, but you especially take into account the user, the use, how the system is going to be used, all those sorts of things when setting and meeting those requirements. Uh, the next time I get to this rotation, I'll talk about the right side of this, which is failure modes. To the extent you're at 98% or you're at 99%, you've met your requirements, people feel good about using uh, the system, there are safe ways to sort of build a more robust design that can deal with, in a safe way, um, the system not always responding perfectly. And we will cover that uh, the next time I get through this, um, you know, to this topic. Uh, but that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope that was uh, interesting. And feel free to answer, uh, ask any questions, and I'm happy to answer them um, as part of this video. Thank you.